Hello there, welcome back to some more Danganronpa single file. Last time we checked out the armory where we saw, um, what was his name? Roger Dodger and, uh, not Mei Feng Li. You know who I'm talking about, but <laughs> anywho, uh, we'll be continuing and I suppose we'll be reviewing with Miss Xavier this time. So let's take a look. I guess we're just going to review, uh, over all the characters we have met. So let's have a look. Um... And also, I have, uh, <laughs> for the past week or so, I had a cold, so if I sound any different, um, then that's your reason. But anyways, hopefully I don't sound too bad. I think uh, I'm towards the end of the recovery, but anyways. Uh, I've been to each destination now, I believe I've met everyone there is to meet. Um, weirdly, the music stopped for a second. The introductions were enlightening. In fact, I think I now have a multitude of new topics to discuss with Miss Xavier. Before I can hail her, the woman appears on the spyglass's projected screen, hovering midair like a spectre. Okay. Ah, uh, you've got that look on your face, the one that tells me you aren't satisfied with something. It's a look I'm all too familiar with as the ultimate research assistant. We're going to pull apart this whole experiment of yours in real time, are we? Very well. I'm afraid we must. You are correct. I have a lot on my mind. Meeting the others have, have elevated certain worries while giving rise to new ones. If reducing my worries is really one of your goals here, please answer me just a few queries. Okay. Um, okay, I guess we'll go top to bottom. What did you make of the, uh, of the others, Miss Xavier? I can't tell whether I should be pleased that they all have killing game experience or... Of course. Or if their experiences in killing games warp them in some way, I picked up on that in a few cases. They got plenty of screws loose. I think it'd be wise to remember that not everybody who exists, uh, who exits a killing game alive is guaranteed to be a saint. The opposite might be more likely. After all, the normal way to exit a killing game is in surviving without killing. Now see here. Yeah. Let's try to focus on the positives for a moment. What did you make of their personalities? They all seem very dedicated to survival. Mr. Eatwell's pre uh, preparedness, Mrs. Rong's training, the mechanical knowledge of the Sullivan brothers. I can begin to believe that they're people that Future Foundation put their trust in. <laughs> hey, is that really what you thought? To me, they seem like an annoying bunch of clowns, an egocentric madman like you ought to fit right in. You must have organized the Killing Games roster yourself by bringing all these automatons in, so let me ask. What do you think of your taste in captives? Can you decipher why you picked each of them for their role? Uh, was it to make things challenging for the killer, or was it to make them challenging for you to work with as a survivor? <laughs> the latter seems more likely to me. I think you deliberately picked a bunch of absolute bozos just to see if you could live through a game with now them. See here. Damn it, woman, I'm not asking for your insane hypotheticals right now. Is it too much to ask that you try to see the good in the human captives here along with us? You're asking a robot to see the good in other robots? You really have lost your mind. There's nothing left of your sense as a roboticist, is there? Um, I have a feeling Maya might be, um, one of these robot thingies, but the rest probably aren't. And she's probably being programmed to doubt everyone or something like that. I'm sure it's in there. We'll, I will get you back to normal. There was another question you wanted to ask, wasn't there? Okay, the killing games that were mentioned. There is something that bothered me about everyone's answers when I tried to get them to tell me about their respective killing game experiences. They all dodged the question, you must have noticed it as well. At first I thought it was just their discomfort on the subject, but that aspect was totally uniform. Of course. I wonder. Suddenly it's meant to shroud their motivations. Um, I think motivations are spelt wrong there. Mo yeah, an extra I, that's okay. Another sad piece of the game of yours. Now see here! It doesn't actually make sense, does it? Shouldn't learning about those experiences be as simple as asking one of the others? How are you? The killing games of the past have all been, without exception, televised. Someone should have seen how those events played out. I'm only missing that info because the hole in the, hole in the memory is correct. Actually, no, I guess your memory loss is so total that you've forgotten about Win as well. Win? Win, otherwise known as World Interest News, it's a highly secure news network that's designed to broadcast outside the tampering of the Agents of Despair, established only about six months ago. As a temporary measure, they are now controlling all broadcast media in the civilized world. This ensures that the killing game broadcasts don't reach much of the populace, lessening the creep of despair. So far, that aspect's working almost perfectly. There are a few mishaps here and there, agents inside Win and so forth, but no failures on a large scale. Of course. You can bet that the Future Foundation has a lot of writing on the continued operation of Wynn. Now see I wonder here. if that's okay to hide what's going on in the killing games away from the average viewer. Don't be an idiot, of course it's preferable. No one's forgotten about the killing games, but no one should be subjected to the 24-7 reel of death the agents of despair are trying to play. You of all people should understand that. 
Hmm? Never mind. Miss Xavier went quiet. My criticisms of Wynne seem to get her unusually heated. But is such a sensitive me method really ideal? I can't help but think it could weaken people's preparation for the games if they can simply avert their eyes. At any rate, that explains why neither she nor anyone else can explain the games that the others participated, participated in to me. Damn it. Okay. Lack of evidence of the robot theory. There is just one more thing I'd like to say to conclude our review. My goal here is to still to protect human lives. My conclusion is that the others here with me are most likely fellow human beings. As an expert in automatons myself, I did not get the sense that they were artificial life forms. To me, they seem like living beings with their own histories, personalities, and motivations. Much like yourself, Ms. Xavier. I'm still in denial. I thought seeing your own creations might spark your memory. You only need to show me some better evidence. From what I can tell, they even have hunger and desire to consume food. It would be most accurate to say that I have seen no proof that they are, as you say, robotic life forms. I sliced myself open for nothing, didn't I? Have you already forgotten that demonstration? Now see here. Yeah. Don't remind me. Not to believe your sacrifice, but the unwarranted and unwanted demonstration is not as bulletproof as you might think. There are all sorts of ways the illusion could be built. Leaving aside the possibility of unwrapping my banner so you can stick two fingers into the goddamn wound like you're one of Jesus' disciples, uh, run through this hypothetical with me. Well, I mean, isn't the obvious um, the obvious thing that like Maya might be one of them, but the rest might not be or something? Say they're all humans that were captured along with you and me, where does that leave us? I would say that leaves us two dis distinct possibilities. The first, that they were humans recruited by the Future Foundation for a training exercise, as the cover story suggests. The second, and perhaps most likely, that they are human captives inside a new killing game. Impossible. Actually, it's worse than that. If we've been trapped, then my laboratory, along with my research, has been compromised. The agents of despair have everything. My projects, all my surveillance data, on all my contracts inside the Future Foundation. Victor. Exactly, but you needn't panic. The fact that you've been made to war in the confused state is nothing more than a ludicrous oversight in your own experiment. You didn't expect your memory loss to be so total when you induced it. It's now become paranoia. I am the failsafe that prevents you from acting rashly in this situation. I don't mean to seem ungrateful, however, I can only act on theories supported by evidence. Right now, you seem just as likely to be the mastermind behind all this as anyone else does, perhaps more so. I'm the res ultimate research assistant. I won't allow you to lose yourself to the paranoid delusion. That's my priority ab above all. The success of this asinine, miscalculated experiment is not worth the price of losing you. So as much as you might reject the truth or make it hard for me to cooperate with you, I will protect you no matter what it takes. I won't abandon you for the sake of my own pride. Hmm. Protect me, but I thought I wasn't in danger. Perhaps she means protecting me from the danger of losing myself inside of this amnesic experiment. Miss Xavier, you needn't worry about that. I... Hmm? If I had a chance to retort, I was forced to reckon with my own predicament. The train had begun to move on its own. It bothered me for but a moment before logic kicked in. I didn't worry about the train's movement just because I'm alone aboard. After all, the train begins to move when summoned to another location. It's headed back to the laboratory, so I can only assume that Maya got impatient and pushed the button herself. You all healed up, Miss Xavier? Of course. I have been for a while, but I decided it was preferable to scope out the field through your spyglass instead of going through that embarrassing meet and greet like you did. Now see here. Damn it, you're gonna have to introduce yourself one way or another. <laughs> yes, but it'll be a lot less humiliating to mingle once everyone's gathered in one spot. I feel like you've already realized this, but I must point out it could be quite some time before everyone gathers together. We all just ate and there are no school-wide events currently scheduled. Now see here. Are you just going to stay in the lab all day? If a hermit like me could introduce myself, you ought to be able to. Hmm, this is a mock killing game, right? Whoever's organizing it realizes uh, that we've all had time to make whatever introductions we're going to. It won't take long before they decide to get us all together. Mm. Okay. For a moment, her sudden disappearance worries me. I'm embarrassed to find myself calling to check on her safety. However, one moment later, the genuine article st uh, steps into the Atara rail with me. Oh, there we go. Miss Xavier appears to be moving all right. Neither her sweater vest nor her pristine white lab coat reveal any hints of blood from er earlier um, to, prefer, uh, sorry, to prove her status as an automaton. She takes a seat across the aisle from me with her arms crossed and a frown on her face, perhaps keeping distance so that the others don't bombard us with questions about her relationship to one another. So, yeah, fair, fair enough. Or perhaps she just liked to have her space. But then again, we're the only two with these, um, like, eye pieces, right, I'm pretty sure, so... Um, something else, seeing her in person uh, here makes me feel a bit guilty about what I said earlier. I've been denying her at every turn and yet she just claimed she'd protect me at any cost despite all of that. I should say something to her, maybe apologize, but as, as I open my mouth to do so... 
The voice suddenly speaks up over the Atari speaker, drowning out the calm and amenable feminine one that had been mechanically advising passengers to stay in their seats while the car was in motion. The new voice is that of an overly macho soldier type and all around much more suited to the military academy setting. The speaker doesn't sound like anyone I've heard on the island so far. Actually, their speaking pattern reminds me of one thing only, the, written, uh, the writing upon the ominous poster on the Atari Rail's cabin wall. <laughs> okay. Listen up, Cadex, this is your superior officer, the Chief of Staff speaking. This is the first time we've been introduced, so I want everyone uh, at attention. That's enough lollygagging and glad handling. A soldier could be fooled into thinking you all excel at nothing more than chewing the fat. Can't call that a talent. Though my belly aching aside, I have to say you all have done an experimentary, uh, e exemplary, sorry, job settling in and putting names to faces so far. You've got to know who you've got in your foxhole with you. Treat this whole damn island like it's your foxhole. I hope all of you feel like you can cozy up in that tight, dark space yeah. and just feel totally at ease with whoever sweaty muscles are bunched against yours like a real band of brothers. Do you feel that way already, cadets? <laughs> okay, <laughs> what the hell is he talking about? The speaker has been rambling for a good long while now, but I feel like each word he speaks is talk taking him further from making a point. <clears throat> Don't feel like some comrades in arms yet? We'll get you there, cadets. You know what I p bet would help? Our very first mandatory a uh, academy briefing. I want all of you on the Atari Rail pronto, double time. <clears throat> Fair to report in with result in disciplinary action. Let's all support each other on our first day here. This is your first step in becoming the first graduating class of Hope's Valley Military Academy. Make your chief proud. Yeah. Dismissed. I really hope that I'm not the only one that just uh, designed the personality of this game master, if that is indeed who the chief of staff is. I feel I should analyze those words of his most, uh, more closely, but they all seem like banter and nonsense. Frankly, I'll be lucky if I can think at all, with all of the other voices buzzing inside the train car in a moment. Some of them, like Miss Loki and Miss Dunaway, are insufferably, uh, insufferably loud. At least I'll be able to keep to myself for the most of the ride. Miss Xavier will be useful distraction in my steed. To be honest, associating, associating with so many others have been exhausting. I've introduced myself to more new faces today than I had for the past year. <laughs> um, and also, I don't actually entirely remember everyone's last names, so I'm not entirely sure who he was pointing out, but um, we'll see in a second, I guess. My prediction comes true once the others begin to board. As they enter their tower rail, the excitable among them begin to swarm her like buzzing flies. <laughs> Oh ho ho, I thought we already had an ultimate researcher. Is there a whole ultimate research team? How many members were you hiding in that clown car of the laboratory? I love how she has padlocks on her hair. <laughs> I mean, fair enough. I'm um, the ultimate research assistant. You know damn well two people can't share an ultimate designation. They'll be against the standards set by the Future Foundation. There was another person I hadn't seen yet on the drone's feed. How'd you stay hidden? Don't be an idiot. If your drone can't open doors, then that's really all there is to it. I was inside a building. Negative. I think the drone had such an obvious flaw. M maybe I can do some modifications and add a mechanical arm. <laughs> Would you? I'm not helping you graft an arm onto your ridiculous toy. Yeah, it's actually pretty refreshing watching her go through it all with them. I dig this soundtrack. <laughs> this gives me like air gear vibes. Do you get what I mean? Like, or, or like Jet Set Radio, I guess. I'd say it's a bit like playback, uh, payback for her avoiding taking part in the introductions earlier. Okay. Unfortunately, my peace and quiet is not too at last. After a quick introduction, the ultimate drill sergeant makes her way over to sit in the seat besides mine with a big crin on my face. Oh, on her face, sorry. <laughs> oh, that was a nice little transition of her flying into frame. Something's got her excited, though it could just be an atmosphere of a killing game, something she's usually excited about. Marnations. So you uh, met up with a friend in here, huh? Pretty lucky. For starters, I wouldn't call us friends. She's called it to me than people I'm just meeting for the first time with no pr proper acquaintance. Beyond that, I question whether I'd call that luck. It's not purely a boon to be placed inside one of these games with a friend. Okay. Now see For starters, here. I wouldn't call us friends. She's called us to me. Wait. Hold on. I think I pressed back or something by accident. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. Your odds of making it out together are not favorable. <laughs> and it sounds like you think someone's gonna now die. Nonsense. Here. I'm confident in our ability to resolve this without bloodshed, but it's only wise to consider the worst case scenario. Is that what you're doing over there, uh, here on your lonesome, just pondering? Darn tootin'. What does that little tag say? Dead something? You know, in all my training drills, we proved time and time again that teamwork can trust the key to getting out of a tough jam like this. You're just gonna regret it if you don't get along with other folks. <laughs> it says... Dead? Or something like D-E-A-D-E, -E, I think. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but okay. And then there's like scribbles on the side, I'm not, I'm not too sure. 
You may be right, I'll try to put in the effort. Speaking of which, we are missing someone, are we not? Oh, we Tarnations, I thought that was everybody. I only hit every stop before the event plus by now. Impossible. Oh, it's probably the, um, the, the tower guy, right? Uh, the ultimate survival prepper still has not boarded. <laughs> Uh, dang it, didn't he realize he might get executed if he doesn't show up some survival guy, huh? See here. <laughs> like a little star, you know, I, I'm sure he's got his own plans. It's worth remembering, a consistent detail between every one of us captives appears to be some level of killing game experience. If he knows the routine, he knows insubordination won't be tolerated by the game's organizers. Oh, sorry, organizer. Okay. The young lady's ordinary chipper demeanor suddenly faded just now, while one half of my conscience is begging me to take this... Uh, bless silence, another part of me insists I intervene. <laughs> Is the situation finally getting to you, Miss Donaway, or are we concerned to Mr. Uh, Mr. DeBunker? No, it ain't that, it's just what you said just now about killing game experience. Kinda goes back to our earlier talk, too. I've been thinking about it since we talked. I'm the only one of us who ain't got no killing game experience. If you knew Vicky, even in, uh, if you haven't been in one, you've been living in them, it sounds you like. So just this once, I may have to admit I was the one out of line. They say, uh, there ain't nobody who's got more experience than this group here. I'm proud to learn from every one of y'all. But I ain't gonna be the weak link in this platoon, nor any other partner. Very well. Miss Dunaway, I wouldn't worry about that. Honestly, you seem more interested in teamwork than anyone else here in the first place. I mean, I guess it's like Roger as well, but... I was a bit harsh earlier, it's true that you shouldn't underestimate the game, but you do have prepar uh, preparatory training that cannot be discounted. Along with a level of... of along with a level of optimism that can't be blessed in a scenario like this, of course. <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to be remiss to have you on our team, uh, especially considering we have a survival prepper that Lee's claim to have an entire faculty for himself. <laughs> hey. Well, when you put it that way, I guess I feel a little better. You know, you're right, Vicky, I read your uh, wrong. Kind of thought you were the lone wolf type. I feel like Debbie's going to be the positive one throughout the whole thing. <laughs> like, calling it the lone wolf type is phrasing it nicely. I'm a bit of a shut-in out of the personal preference and an abundance of caution. You raised a good point though, trusting each other and getting along should reduce anyone's desire to kill. Bonding isn't something we should look at as a wasted time, it has a practical purpose. You oh, and you killed my good faith in your deed already. You managed to make friendship sound like it's some kind of statistic. <laughs> but I won't uh, forget your try- sorry, but I won't forget you tried to give me a little pep talk anyway. Okay. Perhaps I've been looking at things too close mindedly, it's not as though I should avoid talking to the others. Miss Dunaway isn't so unreasonable as I thought on our first encounter, it just took a bit of time. I suppose I'll look for more opportunities to become better friends with the others, assuming we don't find some expedient, uh, expedient? Way out of this, expedient. We'll have to happen later for now, we've arrived at the event plaza. Here we are. Whoa! Palm trees? We exit out the, uh, the rail car in a mostly single file. <laughs> single file. Um, with me at the rear, it doesn't seem like Miss Xavier made any close friends during her chats, given that she uh, she's still walking alone uh, alone ahead of me. Uh, sorry. In fact, with the exception of Skip and his brother Hoyt, none of the others seem to be natural fit either. They share some experience in killing games, but that's about it. It'd be important to break down this distance between us. Dis uh, distrust and seclusion both work against us in this setting. Speaking of which, I am still holding out hope that Mr. Uh, Mr. DeBunker makes an appearance at the event, but it's not looking good. No people are present here besides those of us that just arrived. Okay. Oh, military academy. Like a little board with some rules or something, I guess. The setup is a bit childish, and I'm not sure I'd say it's befitting of the military academy. This instead looks like the sort of stage where teachers would hand out participation awards to children. The suspicious looking television is standing in front of the stage, which is empty aside from the standing microphone. This looks exactly like the sort of thing Monokuma would show, show up on. I really like the little assets, they look really good. Like the, I guess, um, with the bold lines that we just saw. This rolling stand makes it all as tall as a person. Right now, its screen is basically blank, so all I can do is speculate on how it will be used. Victor. Miss Xavier, trust your introductions went off without a hitch? Mostly, I can't say I'm any happier than you about having to spend time with these clowns. It's funny, it feels like she's tr uh, thinking the exact opposite of what I am in regards to warming up to the others. <laughs> I guess it's about time, huh? We'll see the true shape of this ridiculous game. Seems like the cheapest stuff you came up with is going to be one truly dubious character. Now, see here. If I may, Miss Xavier, perhaps we shouldn't be whispering about this with the others so close. You have a point between the spy and the space invader, it's going to be hard to keep secrets safe. Space invader? The nosy one, she's troublesome. <laughs> Give her a chance, the two of you both seem to have a common interest in machines at least. Perhaps you could bond over that. Oh, the nerdy girl. I, I was confused for a second. Please spare me. <laughs> Maybe you actually have more in common with Hoyt. 
Hey, back to the topic of machines, it looks like something's changing on that big screen. Okay. Sure enough, a pattern of static in white and black has be White and black? <laughs> That's a weird way of saying it. I, I always feel like it's black and white, but I guess that's fine. It's begun to play on the screen. We've all been through, and, uh, we've all been through something like this before, and I'd imagine we all have the same except expectation of who will appear. What's going to show up? Monokuma, the mastermind. Maybe we'll get lucky, and it will be an instructional instructional video for the military academy's training program. Oh, that reminds me of like battle royale. That's kind of creepy. What a blessing that would be to learn that I've only been jumping at shadows and all, of, uh, and all of this really is the work of the Future Foundation. Whatever I thought it would be, I wasn't expecting the figure who showed up uh, once the static cleared. Oh! The figure on screen is that, uh, that of a young man clad in a heavy jacket and an oversized backpack. His hair is on kept and long as though he's been surviving in the wilderness for a long time. However, the presence of a gas mask upon his face clues me in as to who he must be. Hello everyone. Now see here. Mr. Debunker, I take you're the one who called us all here? Oh. Yeah, is that true? I was on the right track then, trying to get into that bunker. So he's controlling everything from inside the safety of that facility. Huh. Now that we know where the mastermind behind all this is, taking him down will be easy, leaving it to the unopposed or wrong target elimination. I love how all the characters are here now. It's a lot of fun. And that might be a bit hasty. Sorry, but you're still not getting into the armory, sweetie. Trying to follow my wrong logic string. Do you not wish for me to assassinate Charles Debunker? I think not. Perhaps we should listen to what else he has to say before we devise ways to murder him. Thank sorry. you, that's very kind of you, Miss Spymaster. It's nice to finally be able to speak to you all a little closer to face to face. <laughs> I've been able to track everyone's activities so far as using tools inside, uh, available inside the bunker. <laughs> Those include links to surveillance systems and also to this robot. It will allow me to be a little more um, available to all of you so that you needn't come to the bunker to speak. <laughs> well, how do you do do? Um, how do you, no, how, yeah, how do you do, sorry. <laughs> That's a swell thing to have around, mighty handy. Why does Skip have a little virus? Mark on his shirt. Screw that. <laughs> um, anyways, it's fucking annoying is what it is. Do you honestly think whatever chuck chuckle nuts is beyond this is going to let you attend mandatory meetings using that hunk of junk? Um, and then yeah, I guess Hoyt has a little plane on his hat. Okay. Oh indeed, I've confirmed as much already with a basis uh sheaf of stuff. Hmm. <sighs> is this guy actually the most of mine? I feel like he's just um joining us uh, through this screen. The base is superintendent. I've met no, no such person, Monsieur de Bunker. I hadn't seen hide nor hair of them either until I showed up here. That is, we chatted briefly before all of you showed up. You Where the heck is he now? Let's get this show on the road. <laughs> it is a bit just before you all arrived, something about dramatic effect. <laughs> and you don't know the meaning of it, cadet. This is blatant in subordation. I hope you're prepared for disciplinary action. Now you see that voice again. Show yourself. <laughs> Trying to give me orders, get out. It's not gonna work. I'm not into role reversal. This ain't that kind of operation. I'm hoping to try it once we get to know each other. Fortunately, none of us will be strange for long. After that, it's gloves off. Yeah. Like real comrades. <laughs> it's most uncouth to hold a conversation without first showing yourself. Um, yeah, dirty no. jokes from some sweaty jawhead I can't even see isn't my idea of a good time. You wanna come out here already? <laughs> well, the moment's already ruined. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Everybody bear arms. Stand at attention. I want to see those salutes up back straight, feet forward, chest out. Salute your chief of start, uh, staff, Ataru Kuma. This, I think this was actually the first character I ever saw of this project. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> um, yeah, it's a buff commando Monokuma, I guess. Fantastic. Uh, after all that build up. Oh, I guess it can shrink as well. Fair enough. Uh, we're un uh, understandably a bit underwhelmed when the chief of staff finally reveals themselves to be a little more than another Monokuma knockoff. His appearance is slightly altered with a camouflage pattern, replacing his uh, black side, a red bandana around his eyes, and a soldier helmet covering his ears. But other than that, he's the same plush toy we all recognize. We all stay in silence, waiting for him to make the first remark. Kadas is the sorriest excuse for attention I've ever seen. Not a single one of you is giving a proper salute. Hey, I salute it. I always salute. A proper salute. A proper salute is where you reach out your hand, grab your fellow soldiers, and pull them in tight, look him in a square in the eye. You feel those pops in your grip. You feel the beating of each other's hearts. Screw that. <laughs> you gotta be joking. Did I hear How are we supposed that to do that when you're on the stage and we're down here? And why the hell would we want to? What we have here is a failure to communicate. The Greenhorns seem to have a couple of misconceptions about how things are going to work around here. 
I want to be your fellow soldier, your comrade, your brother. Maybe something a little different than a brother so that it's not weird if we mess up and fall around. But I will not tolerate insubordination. You will show me the respect you, uh, due a superior officer and the chief of staff around here, dammit. In return for your proper respect and subordination, <laughs> I'll guide you through the top-notch curriculum here at Hope's Valley Military Academy. Yeah. <laughs> I love how he just changes, it's amazing. When I'm through with all of you, you'll be exemplary soldiers of hope, the first generation of a long line of soldiers capable of fighting back against despair. Yeehaw! Woohoo! <laughs> well, they're enjoying it, I guess. Uh, wait, so you're telling me we're actually just here for training? That wasn't a trick. <laughs> Cross my heart and hope to the dishonorably discharged. I wouldn't celebrate too early, everyone. <laughs> yeah, for stars, you haven't told us what kind of training you have in mind. I, don't, I doubt it's anything like the fake training exercises at Debbie's school. What was that? <laughs> yeah, there's nothing fake about what we're doing here. Did I hear that right? Uh, it's okay if it's a little fake. We're talking about ki killing games, right? Now we are. Can't accomplish anything half assed training um, for something like this. Impossible. You can't mean. If you interrupt me one more time, it's gonna be demerit. As you guessed it, we're gonna play ourselves a killing game complete with murders, clues, trials, and executions. You wanna know a thing or two about those, I figure? <sighs> Shit. No siree! Well, blow me down. <laughs> Boy, another killing game? Just how many of these does an escape artist have to escape? Determined, all of you? Demerited, all of you. The rules are going up on your tarot pads right now. Although I think you're familiar with most of them, you're gonna have to be doing this by the classic rules. Familiar with Junko and Ashima's game? If, something, uh, if somehow those important rules slipped out of your head, first I recommend you reflect upon your lack of discipline in solitary. Then I recommend you reference the handy Atara pad of yours. I guess these characters are all like American. I just realized that because, you know, their names and stuff. And, but at the same time, it takes place after Danganronpa 1. So I guess you know, the games spread across the world and then this is America or some other English-speaking country, like England or something. As if any of us would be so foolish as to forget those rules, I wouldn't forget them any sooner than my tenants. Probably helps that they're like 100 times easier to remember than the laundry list. Okay. Um, cool. Wait, we can actually do that? Reference. Um. Oh, rules, here we go. Should I, should I be reading these right now, or...? Um, okay, I guess we'll take a look. Cadets may resi uh, reside only upon the academy campus, namely the island. Okay. Night time is 10 to 7, yeah. Sleeping anywhere other than the barracks, yeah. Uh, afraid to explore aside from any, yeah, okay. Violence against, yep, that's the same. Anyone who kills a fellow cadet, um, and then they're discovered, yep. Additional regulations, sure. Once a body is discovered by two or more witnesses. Two or more? Yeah, 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 okay. For a second I was like, wait, was that the case in the original one? Yeah, it was. Uh, trial, sure. If the guilty party is exposed, the guilty party. <clears throat> Let me read that again. The guilty party. Does that mean there's going to be multiple killers? I wonder. Lenny or Tarapa to another cadet. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. The guilty party may only kill a maximum of two people. Okay. Time to break into locked rooms is strictly prohibited. Huh. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, and then we have profiles for all the characters. That's pretty cool. That is actually pretty cool. Um, so a bit more uh, additional information. Oh, and you can even see the ages. Oh, that's actually really interesting. You're 21? Jesus Victor is 21? He looks 40. <laughs> I mean, I guess they're anime characters, so like silver hair is fine, but... Homie, age is not done. How is this man younger than me? <sighs> Whatever, okay. May, uh, Maya is 25, okay. Oh, there's like pronoun stuff as well, that's interesting. Um, okay, Elisa is 21. Charles DePunker is 22. Skip is 19. Cool, cool, cool. Um, and there's like favorite foods and stuff. Which might actually come in handy if this game has presents and whatnot in the free time events. I'm not sure how in depth that is, but I'll uh, I'll make sure to remember this and read into it if there is free time events in this game. Strawberry sorbet, nice. Oh, vanilla ice cream soft serve. That is uh, very basic, but I, I appreciate it because that does slap. Cracked walnuts, canned tuna, uh, salt water water. Taffy. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's the same as Hoyt. Interesting. Both 19, of course, because they're twins. Uh, 22. Oh, wait, hold on. 
I didn't even realize they have nationalities as well. I'm sorry I keep, I am um, really bad at going through this, but okay, let me just check this. Okay, UK, Maya's unknown, American, American as well, American as well, American as well. So yeah, this probably takes place in America, I'm guessing. Russian, uh, 22. Kobe is 26, he's French, Debbie is 18, okay, so she's 18, I remember an episode or two ago I wondered if she was 16 or 17, because I was just like, oh, military school's from 16 or something, in her introduction, she's American, Sadie's 19, Sadie's Japanese, huh, interesting, and Roger's 24, and Roger is American as well, and Leeching is 20? With those muscles? Jesus Christ, girl. I'm telling you, some people just built different. Um, and she's somewhere in Asia, I guess. Just generic in Asia. Probably um, Chinese-based. Whether that's China or, or Taiwan or somewhere else. Um, but anyway, okay. Let me go back. Um, it is around 30 minutes. Uh, I'll cut it off in a second. I'm sorry I wasted, um, well, I wasn't really wasted. I, I enjoyed looking through that, uh, those profiles, so, you know, it's a little interesting part, but let's, let, let's just see what Atara Kuma has to say for us. Remember the most important, uh, rule of all, it's the Atara pad. Read your Atara pad on the Atara way with, with your good buddy Atara Kuma. We don't use the M word around here. Oh, modern rail, I see. Keep that vulgar beast name out of your mouth. He's the enemy and you gotta hate the enemy. Speak the devil's name at your own peril. It's interesting, there was no rule uh, including monorails in the in the rule book, I just realized. <laughs> now, on the other hand, I'm a friend, a completely just different bear than the devil. Screw that. And it seems so different to me. You're making us play a game with the exact same goddamn rules as the game most of us escape from. Didn't Grey Horns know about self sacrifice? They're taking one up for the team and ensure the well being of future generations. <laughs> Besides, I got total faith in all of you. This isn't your first rodeo, right? You got the know how already. Okay. Another killing game, not again. <laughs> As a matter of cell of the mystery, I appreciate the rare vote of faith, but I have to admit, I'd rather have a pardon from these exercises. I signed up for classes, not for killing anyone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look at me, I'm a hippie, tie dyed into the wall, I can't kill anybody. Okay? <laughs> Speak for yourself, there's no situation in which my wrong ta target elimination could fail to take out its intended targets. Oh no, she's going to. Going for the kill. Ensure Tarakuma, please, if you claim to be our brother in the service of training arts, you must have other means to do it. Risking on deaths cannot be the proper way to go about it. I know this cannot be the Future Foundation's intention. Okay. I love you all too much to baby you, so I won't. Remember, cadets, whether I insult or humiliate you, whether I threaten your lives and limbs, whether I laugh at your misfortune and cackle as you all meet in an ultimately end, an untimely end, sorry, struggling to win with the shit hand that life has once again dealt you. It's all for your own good to make whatever sad scraps of you remain when this is all over into perfect soldiers. Bah! Monster. Played out just like anybody else would have expected it to. So what? You ought to know we ain't uh, got any inclinations to kill each other. There's gonna be more to your game. Okay. <laughs> Glad you that up, cadet. Let's talk about first training exercise of plan for all you called a motivation if that's too long winded for you. For uh, for today, your green horse get the day off. Go ahead and enjoy you know, your night time, all that shit. Tomorrow, everyone eats breakfast. Uh, kill some time until oh, uh, oh, hun ele sorry, I can't. Oh, 1100 hours. Then meet back at the event plaza for what I call the kill detector test. I really don't like the sound of that. <laughs> you will be real interested in this one. Basically, we're gonna use the high tech lie detector device that covers your little suction cups. Your green horse are gonna answer two essential questions. First, have you killed anyone before? Second, how many uh, are you planning to kill here? Pretty simple, huh? Screw that. All the fucking stupid ass games, you gotta realize that if you've got any potential kills anywhere in this game, this is going to ruin any plan they cook up, right? It's like the opposite of a motivation. <laughs> it does seem like a bit of an odd, odd choice. There's a little more to go over. First off, I'm going to show you my generosity. The first training exercise is entirely optional. You can choose not to participate if you don't want to. Yeah. No penalty at all. It's your choice to show up or not. <clasps> of course, you'll be missing a prime bonding opportunity with your favourite chief of staff if you decide not to come, so... <laughs> I'm sure you decide to come anyway, right? <laughs> huh? Second part is that all results will be completely public. If you do choose to participate in the test, your results will be shown to everyone in the attendance. Oh, this is interesting. It's like, um... Virtue's last reward with the ally in betrayal. Like you can betray someone and get a head start and get extra points, but then everyone knows that you betrayed someone, and now people won't trust you anymore. So yeah, it's interesting. I like it. It's fun to compare test results with your fellow cadets, right? What the? 
impossible. That's insane, I've never heard of such a ridiculous motivation. Why would anyone choose to participate in the bloody kill detector test? <laughs> You're the ultimate researcher, you figured it out. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> well, shucks, as long as none of us chumps have anything to hide, then there's no reason we shouldn't all just take the test, right? <laughs> right, think of it as a trust-building exercise, gaha. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna let you youngins figure out yourself and come to your own resolutions. Can't give away too much. This is actually genius. And I say that both to the creator of this game aim, as well as canonically, like, Atarakuma or whatever. Because, if you don't go to this test, then you're pretty much saying, I either have killed someone in the past, or I'm going to kill someone in the future. Because, if you had nothing to hide, you would just go directly there, right? So... Yeah, that is... that's a tough one. I'll be around if you need me, brother. Simply say my name and I'll come. Yeah. Bia Zulu, cadets. The better spears, leaving us in silence. And I think I'm gonna end this one off here. It was a little bit of a longer one, but I think it's a nice part to wrap it up for now. Um, we got to learn a whole bunch of the killing game stuff, as well as Ataru Kuma's first trial. Very, very interesting one. I wonder what's gonna happen with the rest of the characters. And I wonder if we'll get the choice. Um, if the game will give us a choice to, to go or not. I, I don't know. But uh, only one way to find out, and that is to continue playing. So I'll see you all soon with some more Danganronpa Single Fire. Hope to see you all then. Bye-bye.